OK, you've finally finished working on your pictures. You may want to send one off to a client for approval, post it to your website or even add it to a blog, but you want to add some form of protection to it. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at a slightly different method. Right, just starting off, if I come to Image, Image Size, with this particular one, I've already reduced it down to a width of 1024 pixels by a res resolution of 72. So we're going to come down, we're going to click on the Create New Layer icon, Layer 1, Double clicking on the text, we're going to rename this layer logo just so we can keep tabs of what's on it. Next job is to pick up the rectangular marquee tool. Coming into the image, we're going to click down, dragging it across like that. This, don't forget, is on this new empty layer. We want to fill this with black. If you've got any other colors rather than the default, just press D on the keyboard, that'll restore the colors. Now using the shortcut, if you're on a Mac, it is Option Delete, that's Option Delete on a Mac, it is Alt and Backspace, that's Alt and Backspace on a PC, will fill the selection with black, the foreground colour. Command or Control D will get rid of the selection. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to import my logo, where's it gone? If I just come to File, let's just have a look, there it is there, it's arrived. We want to copy this going to use Command A or Control A on a PC. Right, to copy it, Control or Command C will now copy this and close it down again. Back onto this image, Command or Control V will paste it in. It's arrived, there it is there. Again, we're just going to click on the text and I'm going to put in Lens so we know what's on this layer. A little bit big, Edit Free Transform will fix this. Command or Control T is the shortcut for that. Now holding down the Shift key, you can reduce it down in size. The Shift key will enable us to reduce it down, maintaining all the correct proportions. Just releasing the Shift key, we can move it into position. Let's pop right into the image, take a look, and still holding down Shift on the keyboard, we can now drop it down so it fits in snugly onto that area. There, that looks pretty good. Pressing Enter to apply the transformation. Zooming out a little bit. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's stay while we're here. Let's stay at this particular uh, sort of size so we can see the next step. We're now going to apply some bars to the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in another new empty layer. Let's double click on this and we're going to rename this one bars and just press enter or return to apply it. Coming in with the marquee tools, we've got the single row tool. Always wanted to do, use this, finally found a use for it. One other useful tip to use with this is just go away, please. I know what it is. Press on this icon here so you've got the add to selection. Just make sure, thank you, that the add to selection has been ticked or clicked. There goes number one. Coming down, you'll notice the plus symbol there. That means we can click down and add the selection to the bottom one. In that pops. So we've got two selections so far. Select, modify, expand. Now 8 pixels is going to be rather too big for this. I'm going to drop it down to, let's see, about 3 pixels should be fine. But you may need to experiment. It does depend on the file size of the image you're working with. We're going to click OK to that. You'll notice the way they've opened right up. We're now going to fill this with white. Now to fill it with white, on a Mac it is Command Delete, that's Command Delete on the Mac. On a PC, it is Control Backspace. That will fill the bars with white. Command D or Control D will get rid of the selection. OK, now let's add some text. I'm just going to press X on the keyboard so white becomes the foreground color. We're going to pick up the Type tool. Coming across, I've got a font there of Arial, 8 pixels. I think it's going to be pretty small. If you just click down, no, it's pretty big for this size. Right, OK, carry on. And what we're going to put in, we're going to put in... I've got my name for a minute. You can tell by the silence, can't you? Right, there you are. So used to type in. You'll notice at the moment the text layer is still saying layer 1. Click on the T. You can see it's now become committed. The text is available for us to edit. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's take a look. There it is there. Let's just move it into position. If we double click, it becomes highlighted. If you press Command or Control, you can bring your cursor in, you can reposition it, you can also make it bigger, and you can make it smaller by just grabbing hold of these grab handles. Let's just click back. That'll be good, like it is. Great stuff. And I forgot a T, an I even. So what we can now do is just highlight it again, 
like so. I deliberately made this mistake so I could show you the way that you can even sort of re-edit it as we're going along. That's why I make mistakes. Right, believe that, you believe anything. Clicking on the bars layer, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop down, we're going to click on FX, we're going to come down, we're going to click on Bevel and Emboss. That's going to bevel and emboss the bars there, it gives a nice rounded edge to it, that looks pretty good. And you can also, while you're here, you can also do things like you may want to change the colour, you may want to have red bars and who wouldn't. Or you can have whatever colour you want by just clicking on the colour picker so you can really sort of experiment with this. Just leave this for a moment, I'm going to untick that and just have the bevel and emboss. Let's click OK to that. Right, next, we're going to come back now to our logo layer. We're going to add a layer mask to it. We're going to zoom out to this area here and we're going to pick up the gradient tool. We've got our default colors there. Black is the foreground color. Just pressing X on the keyboard to make sure the black is the foreground color. We're working on the mask on the logo layer. We're going to click and press down Shift, dragging the gradient tool across. And you can see the way we can now blend this in like that. So you can actually take it back as much or as little as you want. Great stuff. The other thing we can also do is you see the way the bars are quite solid. If we just double click here, we can now come and we can apply, say, a drop shadow to it, which gives it even more depth. And we can click OK to that. The whole thing is coming down here on our effects layer. To copy this to our text layer, all we have to do is press and hold down the Alt key on a PC. It's the Option key on the Mac. Clicking down, lifting it up until the black line is around the text layer. We can drop it in. That's now applied the sort of the drop shadow effect to the text layer as well. You can, of course, you can always switch this layer off, just revealing that with the, the background fully underneath, then you can see the drop shadow. Well, if I just switch this back on, the other thing you can do is you can just switch the drop shadow off or even delete it if you don't want it. Right, the next stage, let's take a look at saving this. What we're going to do is we're just going to fold these up out of the way by clicking on the arrows there. Next, grabbing hold of the background, it's done its job, we can drop that in the bin, thank you very much. and Clicking on all of the layers, holding down Control or Command, so we've selected them all, we're going to use the shortcut Command G or Control G, which will put them all into one grouping folder. What we can do now is just double click here and we're going to call this Logo, as we've done before. So all our logo files are in this particular, all our logo layers, should I say, are in this particular sort of folder there. We're going to pick up the Crop tool. We're going to drag it over the image because we don't need it to be any bigger. Now once we've done this, we can come to File, we can come to Save As, we're going to come and pop it in my folder there, work in what we're going to call this, we're going to call this um, logo, it's quite a small size, so I'm just going to call this one small so I can identify it. Leaving it as a Photoshop, as a PSD file, so make sure we've got this one here ticked, we can click Save. That's now saved it. OK, let's come to this image here. Now you want to add your copyright to this. You want to add and what is an effect become almost like a branding. Because when we come to this logo small PSD file, let's open it up. Using CS4, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sort of pull that to the side like that. You can even grab hold of the layer itself. We can drag, we can drop it onto this image placing it in. You'll notice this one is smaller again. It was taken by a photographer and good friend of mine, Joe Doyle. So we can reposition this using Command T or Control T. You can even reduce it down in size. I'm just pressing Shift on the keyboard so you can bring it in. You can place it something like that. Don't forget you can have it as big or as small as you want. I'm just going to press Enter or Return. Always a good idea as well, just to crop off the edge. You'll notice the size down here. You see it's a very small file size at uh, 2.55 megabytes. If I just press Enter or Return, you'll see the way it's trimmed it off. Now in here are all the bits and pieces that we used for this image. So if you don't want to use the bars, you can si simply just switch them off. If you want to come and you don't want to use this, you can switch this off. So you're just leaving your logo and perhaps your website address.